Hey everybody, Brandon here. And today we are smoking on our Lone Star Grills 20 by 42 inch offset. First time we're cooking on it, I'm so excited. And so far, she's run like a champ. Got some good St. Louis style ribs coming up. So stick around, because we're gonna take you from the process of trimming them up, through cooking them, through wrapping them, and then finally cutting into them and looking at them bad devils. And I cannot wait to eat later tonight. Now, let's go prep some ribs. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. You'll see I have some things set up. I've got my rub ready to go here, homemade rub. Uh, you can put use you can use whatever pork rub you guys like, okay? Mine's just simple. Salt, sugar, uh, garlic powder, onion powder, just a little bit of cayenne, some chili powder, some paprika. Uh, it's just make your own rub. I made mine. Or use whichever one you like. They're all great. There's a great bunch of rubs out there. If you don't want to make your own rub, then a couple that I'd recommend would be this Killer Hogs barbecue rub. They have a hot rub. I like this Mojo barbecue. This stuff's pretty good and it infuses kind of like a barbecue flavor. Mississippi Grinds by Swine Life is really good. You can get all of these, by the way. Come on, focus. Focus. You can get all of these on the Killer Hogs website. Google Killer Hogs. But for like I said, for today, I'm using my own rub. Now the first thing that we're gonna be doing here is getting this skin off the back. You'll see that they're already unpackaged. Some people don't take the membrane off the back. I do, because I don't like to bite through it and the rub doesn't penetrate it. So you don't get any flavor on the bottom of your rib. Not that there's a lot of meat on the bottom of spare ribs, but I still like to do it. All right, so you're gonna wanna get you a butter knife like I didn't have ready. So you take a butter knife under the bone here. There we go, you see that lifting up? Oh, it broke on me. The trick is to try to get it all the way across. Well, it keeps breaking. I tell you what, man, sometimes spare ribs, spare ribs are the worst. Baby backs, really easy to get the membrane off. Spare ribs. The worst. What you do, you get you some paper towel. Grab onto that membrane and just pull. And whatever comes off, comes off. It goes under the skirt a little bit here. And then all like that, boom, membrane's off. Now this one didn't have a lot of membrane. It's got this, it's got this big skirt on this side. Not much we could do about that skirt. The selection was not great at the store. So um, I'm probably gonna trim a little bit of this off. You see it's kind of floppy down on this end. There ain't no bones in there. That's just skirt. Last bones like right here. So probably trim this skirt up too. I like trimming the skirt. I'll flip this around so it's easier to work with. Again, this one hopefully will be better. It looks better. Slide that knife all the way under there, all the way across. Peel, slide and peel, slide and peel, not key and peel. That's different. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! Again, set your knife down. Grab you that paper towel. And slowly, don't rip it, see, I just lost half of it. Ain't much skirt here. This is gonna be a good rack. This is gonna be the better, this is gonna be the better rack for sure. This rack, probably still be tasty. This will probably be the better looking rack, let's just say. It. You know when you're out with your friends, you compare racks, I mean, let's, of ribs. Now it's simple, I'm just gonna take one glove off. You don't have to use these gloves, by the way, guys. You don't have to. You don't gotta use gloves. Wash your hands, though. Wash them after everything. Wash them after every single time you touch your meat. After you touch your meat, you should wash your hands. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rub. I'm just gonna put it on the bottom. Without trying to make too much of a mess. If this were a competition, if this were for competition, I would trim that skirt up. I, I probably wouldn't have even bought this rack of ribs, to be honest. Uh, I'd probably, I'd trim it probably from here back. 
So it would be from here this way. That would be what we actually work with. It is what it is. You guys notice I don't use a binder. I don't use, I don't rub anything on it first. I don't use mustard, mainly because my wife is repulsed by mustard, even though you don't taste it at the end, but whatever. So simply take them, flip your rack, season both sides liberally. I like to do the top a lot more. I like to do the top more because that's where all the good stuff is. It's not like baby backs. Like I said earlier, baby backs have a lot of meat on the bottom still. Most of the meat's on the top, but a lot on the bottom still. Uh, spare ribs do not. If you guys don't know, moment of education. The, if you don't know what the difference between the spare rib and the baby back rib is, Baby back rib. So God, what did they say? Ribs? Never. They never say ribs. Is what is directly under the loin. So that white meat, basically. The lighter meat. The spare rib is what's directly under the pork belly. Gotta get that belly. That's the bacon. So that's what's under bacon. You're basically making bacon ribs. Uh, which is why they're they're generally juicier, tastier. Like I said, I go back and I reapply the rub and pat it down. Some people don't like the pat. I like the pat. If you don't like the pat, don't pat. If you disagree with any of my methodology here, that's fine. Do it your way or do it a way someone else did it. This is just one way of making ribs. My favorite way, but just one way. All right, so now our ribs are prepared here. You see them down yonder. All we gotta do is go uh, start the pit up and cook them. These things should take about five to six hours. Not a big deal, it's uh, about noon-ish right now. Let's go fire that pit up. That Lone Star Grills. I'm so excited. This is my first cook on my brand new Lone Star Grills 42 by 20 inch offset. And I'm excited. That's, that's all there is to it. So let's go fire that thing up. We've got our pit up to temp here. Let me get in the shade. Uh, you can see it's about 275. I wanna, I'm gonna bring it back down some. What you guys don't see is there's about two gallons of water in this pit. In the bottom, obviously. It'd be really hard to keep it in the top. Those are ready to go on. We're gonna slap them up top first. All right, so we're gonna slap these ribs right up on the top rack. I'm gonna use this to pull out some. Just gonna lay them right in the middle. Now with ribs, one thing you want to do is you want to push them together. You want to compact them up because that's how they're going to cook. However you set them up is how they're going to cook. That's hot. Okay, so the ribs are in. I'm gonna, I got a chuck roast I'm going to throw on here, but that's got nothing to do with the video. So ignore the chuck. All right, now that our ribs are on, uh, I will see you guys back in one hour's time and we'll take a peek at them. All right, so the ribs have been on for about an hour and a half or so. That rub's kind of, it's not quite set yet. But we are going to spritz. And today I'm using, I'm just using water. Ooh, open that up some, there we go. Just using water. Some people say you should let the rub set first. I'm of the mindset. Spritz every hour. Totally up to you. But these things are looking nice. Looking nice and cooking nice. So we'll check back in about another hour or so. It'll be almost time to wrap them up. Uh, so long as that uh, rub set. Poke them back in there. And we'll see you guys in about an hour. 
thought I'd just sit down and have a chat with you guys. If you hear uh, kids in the back, that's uh, they're in the front yard playing in the sprinkler. So, you know, kids. Anyways, so far we've prepared the meat, got it on the smoker. We've got our ribs going for over an hour. We spritzed them and now we're just uh, waiting. It's about 250 on the top grate. Uh, the bottom grate is closer to that 200 mark. I'm gonna have to add some wood here soon, but we'll chat first. Just a couple things to note on this process for cooking these ribs. I want them to cook between 225 and 275, really anywhere in that range is fine for me. Uh, I know that sounds like a big range, but that's, that's exactly anywhere in there I'm happy with. I've got them on the bottom grate right now, so, because the top grate was, was a little too warm for what I wanted. And that's fine. I just need to learn to control the fire better. That's really all it is. Uh, this is the first cook on this Lone Star Grill smoker, and I've been feeling like I need to check it every couple seconds. And I don't need to because I'm so used to cooking on my old Oklahoma Joe smoker where the temperature would just be all over the place and you couldn't walk away from it for five seconds. So I've been checking this thing every like couple minutes and it's I don't need to. I just don't need to. It holds temperature so great. It's, it's awesome. So these ribs are coming along nicely. Uh, pretty soon we'll be wrapping them and I'll show you guys the wrapping process. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's not too involved. You're gonna need some butter, either squeeze butter or real butter. We'll be using real butters today. You need some brown sugar and you need some honey. And some of that extra thick aluminum foil. Be thick. So that's all the wrapping process is going to be, and then we'll slap them back on the smoker. I do have a couple other things on the smoker, but uh, that's for a different video as well. All right, first of all, yes, I am squatting down, but it's because this tent is so low, I need to find a way to raise it up. But for now, uh, we're at about hour, almost three, it's almost time to wrap. So we're going to spritz, we're going to open them, we're going to poke them with a stick and see what they feel like. And yeah, might just be time to wrap. Let's go. All right, so we got our gloves on. Now let's check these ribs. It's been about three hours. Just spritzed them like a second ago before I turned the camera on because I'm a dummy and forgot to. But what we're kind of looking for here is how these things are bending. This, that's about ready. It's about ready for wrapping. Let's try this one out. Oh yeah, look how floppy that is. This is, if I'm not mistaken, yep. The better one. So that was plenty tender. Those are ready to wrap now. So let's go get the wrapping station ready. I'll see you guys over there. Here we are, time to wrap. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set my ribs down over here for now. And we're gonna build our bed, which is gonna be a little bit of brown sugar. Not a whole lot, just a little, you don't need much. A little bit goes a long way here. Now I will say, you see my hands, I'm cooking this for my family, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. If you're cooking for other people, I would recommend using gloves when you're handling food. But this is all for home eating, home, home eating, so I ain't worried about it. A little bit of honey, you're gonna want some honey, some brown sugar, and some butter, like I mentioned earlier. Again, you don't have to go overboard with any of these materials. And like I said, some butter. I'm using, I, I used to use squirt butter, and I still do from time to time, but I find just little tiny squares of butter will do. Don't want to use it all on one side here. You do want to treat this first side, the bottom part, better than the top. Why, you might ask? Well, simple. This is where the face of the ribs is gonna be. So we're gonna take these, put a face down, and then we're gonna do the same on the back. Just a little bit of brown sugar. A little bit of honey. A little honey on a biscuit here. All right, we still got one more thing, one more rack of ribs to do, so we're not wasting all of our materials on this. I'll throw a couple slices of butter on top. That's it, you don't need a ton of stuff on the top of it. It's all gonna run down to the bottom anyways. 
So you wanna take, marry up your foils. Yes, I said foils, there are two of them. You're gonna kinda of close it up a little. Bring your other one up. And you're gonna lightly, lightly close it up. That would be my phone going off. So this end, you're gonna kind of fold over a little bit. And then you're gonna find the edge of the ribs and just fold it on over. So here's what I did. Kind of close it up some, find the edge, fold it over. And there you go. One rack of ribs, completely wrapped. See what happens in here is you can add more of these materials if you like. You can add less of these materials if you like. You don't have to, uh, if you don't like honey, don't add honey. If you wanna throw a little glaze in here, feel free. These are just guidelines. But what this does is this creates like a little rib atmosphere full of tasty juices and mixing and, oh man, it's really good. This is kind of a competition style trick. You don't have to put all this crap in there if you don't want to. You can just simply wrap the ribs but I think it, it creates this sugary, caramely, buttery glaze. That's so good, so good. These will need about another two hours, at least wrapped. And then we're gonna unwrap them. Well, they might not even go a full two hours. They are spare ribs, so they cook a little faster. So we'll go for about two hours and check them. See you guys at the checking time, which will be two seconds for you, but a couple hours for me. All right, it's time to start unwrapping. Let's see how we look here. These moon gloves don't make it very easy to uh, work. I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a bowl here soon. Ooh, you talk about pullback. Those are just about done, boy. <laughs> Those barely hold under their own weight. I gotta go throw these things back on. You want to talk about pullback? There she goes. Look at that. I'll throw these back on. These hold up a little bit better. They're way thicker. But look at that color, man. Oh, buddy. Now that we have our ribs unwrapped, we are going to let them cook for about another hour. I'll be probing them for tenderness. Uh, I think it's, I think it's plain as day, clear as crystal, that the one rack will be done way faster because it's just a lot thinner. Uh, the rack that I said was gonna be the better rack. I'm not sure if I'll be right at the end of the day, but we'll see, who knows? So I'm gonna let these go for another hour and that's when we'll come back and I'll show you guys one hour. All right, so we're back. Here's our ribs at about hour marks, just about six, not quite six yet. So I'm gonna put a little base of old sweet baby rays on them. Woo, good thing I did that over the ribs because apparently there was a lot to come out. <laughs> what the? I just take our little basting brush, rub it around. You guys can choose to not sauce your ribs. Obviously, you have that choice. That is your right as an American citizen. Or maybe you're not from America. And maybe that's not your right. Maybe you don't have a right to uh, choose how you like your ribs. That would suck. But at least here in America, I know Canada probably... England and most of the free world, uh, you can make your ribs however the hell you want. All right, so that leaves a lot of lines. Obviously, I wouldn't use this brush in a competition uh, because you may or may not see it's leaving quite a few lines. Let's zoom in on it a little. I'm just gonna put this sauce on. 
let it set up. Okay, then real quick, I'm gonna put a second sauce on them because I like to stack flavor profiles. This is a thinner sauce. So the first sauce we put on was Sweet Baby Raisin. That's kind of a sweeter sauce. It's just their regular sweet sauce. This one is actually the famous Dave's uh, barbecue sauce. Say what you want about their food because yeah, they are the fast food of barbecue, but their sauces sure are good. So there's our sauce ribs. We're gonna push this back in and let those set for about 15 minutes or so. And then these babies are done. We're gonna probe them for tenderness. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times. Tenderness, not uh, temperature. I can tell you right now, this rack is nowhere near as tender as this rack. When we come back, it's gonna be time to take these ribs off and cut them up. All right, so here we are. Big moment of truth. Our ribs are finally done. They've sat for a few minutes. Uh, let's cut them open and see what they look like. Let's cut one rib from each rack. So I can see it kind of runs like this. We'll go right from the middle. It's rack A, spin them around. All right, re moment of truth since I failed on that one. But that's what this one looks like. Finished product, got a nice sheen to it. Not Charlie, the uh, decent smoke ring. I'll leave that one sitting back up, right? And this one's gonna be partier since I didn't have to flip it around. There we go. Look at that. Taste test. We'll see which one's the better rack. This is the one that I said was gonna be the better rack. See that bite? I don't know. That's a good bite. They are not overdone. They're done just right. <laughs> All right. Let's bite out of this one. This has got a lot of fat veins and stuff running through it. I think I'm gonna be right. The other one's definitely gonna be the better rack. Let's, let's try to do a bite. Mm. Not overdone, not underdone. That bite's a little funky because, uh, let's see if we can't get her to focus here. Just because you can kind of see on this rib, there's a lot going on in there. Whereas the other rib, it was more pure. So that would be the rack that I said originally is the better rack. Thank you, Airplane. Lone Star Grills helped me make some excellent ribs today. I've got barbecue sauce on my face. I've got barbecue sauce on my hands. But that Lone Star Grills, man, top notch. Never had to worry about it. Whole day, performed like a champ. Actually, I performed too well. I had to dampen it down some. So uh, let's go over the cook real quick. We got the ribs ready, we prepared them, got the fire ready. I poured two gallons of water in the bottom of that cooker and it helped keep things quite moist. So I, I just, I'm happy with it, man. I can't complain. Got these ribs done uh, three hours, then we wrapped them and then we unwrapped them after two hours and it was the perfect amount of time. Let them cook for another hour last 15 20 minutes uh right before the end there sauced them let them go 20 minutes and by god if we don't have a perfect rack of ribs two of them actually so thanks for sticking around guys i hope this video helps you and if it does let me know i like to read the comments try to get to as many comments as i can guys uh, that's all there is that's all there is to say about that i do appreciate you guys uh liking following all that stuff subscribing if you want to if you don't want to that's your prerogative socks and crocs Sorry, my beard's all disheveled right now. I've been wearing a stupid mask all day. Stupid 2020. Anyways, that about does it for the rib video. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope it was helpful. I appreciate you watching this far. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you don't, make sure you smash that thumbs down button twice. I am Brandon from Bee's Barbecue. Until next time, keep your lid closed and your smoke thin. Smoke on. If you hear kids in the background, they're out front playing with the sprinkler. They're not being murdered. Aluminum foil, be thick, thick.
all the seas. <laughs> Let the plane go over. 